Hey, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major business continuity management topics in Domain 7 to understand how they interrelate and to help guide your studies and help you pass the CISSP exam. This is the sixth of six videos for Domain 7. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Business Continuity Management, BCM, is the business process that drives the planning and the preparation for disasters by conducting the BIA, the Business Impact Analysis Process, and then using the results of the BIA, the measurements of time, RPO, RTO, WRT, and MTD to create, test, train people for, and maintain business continuity plans, BCPs, and disaster recovery plans, DRPs. The point of all this planning, preparation, and training within business continuity management is to ensure critical processes and systems continue to operate during a disaster to ensure the survival of the business. Business continuity management does not focus on every single business process and system in the business, but rather the most critical. During a disaster, it is generally not possible to keep every single part of the business running as usual. So in business continuity management, we need to determine what business processes and systems are most critical and focus our limited resources on those most critical systems and processes during a disaster. There are three major goals of business continuity management, and you need to remember them in this order. Number one most important goal is safety of people. People are the most valuable asset to an organization, and without people, there will be no organization. Number two is to attempt to minimize the impact, minimize the damage caused by the disaster, so that three, we can help to ensure the survival of the business. The first major process that we perform in business continuity management is the business impact assessment. It is through the BIA that we identify the most critical business processes and systems by consulting stakeholders from across the organization. The major output of the BIA process is four different measurements of time that have been approved by the process or system owner. The owner must approve these numbers because ultimately the owner must pay for the costs associated with achieving these numbers. And let me re-emphasize, each of these numbers is a measurement of time, seconds, minutes, hours, days. The recovery point objective, the RPO, is a measurement of how much data an organization is willing to lose in the event of a disaster. So if the server explodes, what is the maximum tolerable data loss as a measurement of time? Five seconds worth of data, 10 minutes worth of data, three hours, two days, that's the RPO. The recovery time objective, the RTO, is a measurement of the maximum tolerable time to recover systems to a defined service level. Typically, this means how long it takes to bring backup systems online. The work recovery time, the WRT, is the maximum tolerable amount of time to verify systems and our data integrity as part of returning systems to normal operations. And the maximum tolerable downtime, the MTD, also sometimes referred to as the maximum allowable downtime, the MAD, is the maximum time a critical process or system can be disrupted before there are unacceptable consequences to the business, like the business going out of business. The MTD is always going to be greater than or equal to RTO plus WRT. And here's a diagram that summarizes these numbers. This visual helps me remember how these numbers fit together. Hopefully it does the same for you. And to emphasize this point, it is the owner of a processor system that must approve these RTO, RPO, WRT, and MTD numbers because the owner has to pay for the recovery strategies that will allow these numbers to be achieved. Now let's talk about two major types of plans that these numbers drive the creation of. Business continuity plans, BCPs, focus on critical business processes. For example, paying employees is typically considered to be a critical business process. I don't know about you, but I'm not super excited to show up for work if I'm not being paid. So in the event of a disaster, like our automated payroll system blowing up, the BCP plan would focus on how to continue the business process of paying employees. BCP plans essentially focus on the survival of the business, and BCP plans often contain one or more DRP plans. Disaster recovery plans, DRPs, focus on the recovery of critical technology, infrastructure, and systems. 
So in the example of the payroll system exploding, while the BCP is focused on keeping the payroll business process running, the DRP would be focused on recovering the actual payroll system. It is incredibly important that BCP and DRP plans are tested periodically. There is little likelihood that the plans will work effectively in a real disaster if they haven't been tested and refined based on the results of testing. Tests are typically done in order, starting with the first simplest test, refining based on that test, and then moving on to the next, more comprehensive test, refining, and moving on up incrementally through all the tests. The first simplest test that can be done is a read-through or checklist. This is where the author of the plan reads through it to make sure they haven't missed anything. They are essentially going through a checklist. A plan should include the phone numbers for everyone in it, alternate contact info, etc., etc. Is all of this information correctly written down in the plan according to a checklist? The next test is a walkthrough. This is an entirely paper-based exercise where you make a few copies of the plan and then you put those plans in front of stakeholders from across the business who are all sitting around a conference room table. Then these stakeholders walk through the plan. Okay, page one says we do X, Y, and Z. The various stakeholders who are experts in their respective areas, finance, customer relations, IT, business owners, will then provide feedback on the plan. A simulation is again an entirely paper-based exercise where you have stakeholders sitting around a table with copies of the plan in front of them. The difference is that you invent a scenario, like a virus outbreak or an earthquake at a location, and now everyone at the table must try and follow the plan as though the disaster were occurring. You then periodically throw in some updates or twists. The data center just blew up. CNN is on line three to see how well the plan works in this scenario. A parallel test is the first time that any systems are actually touched by the test, specifically only backup systems and not production systems. This is again a scenario-based test. Some scenario is invented and people have to try and react to the scenario using the plan and trying to do things like bring backup systems online. The final and most important type of test that we perform is a full interruption or full scale test. This is literally where you cause a disaster. If you really wanna know if your backup power system is going to work, when the power is cut, the best way to test this is to cut the power. Full scale testing should only be performed after every other test has been performed successfully and you have management's approval. Remember CYA. How do we determine the order in which we restore business processes and systems? Rather obviously, we restore the most critical processes and systems first. This is another important outcome of the BIA process. Part of the BIA process is to get a bunch of business and system owners around a table to argue and determine which processes and systems are truly the most critical and in what order they should be restored. We also need to create what are known as dependency charts. We usually can't just bring up a system in isolation. We must consider what dependencies the system has and bring those dependencies up in the right order. Dependency charts help us map all of this out. And that is an overview of Business Continuity Management within Domain 7, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I'll provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies.